In this section, we will configure the BMC Amy DevOps properties files. These files tell the BMC Amy DevOps for DB2 and SQL Assurance plugin modules how Change Manager and SQL Explorer are configured on the mainframe. You can use these files with both the Jenkins and Universal Connector platforms. At the BMC Support Central website, download the files needed to support the BMC Amy DevOps and SQL Assurance products. We will be using the empty properties file included in the download. Let's start by editing the properties file. Here we are using an IDE, but you can edit the file in text format with Notepad or some other text editor. The file must be saved in text format, but the file type must be .properties. You can set a max limit value to limit records of each job spool file to download to the workspace because these files can be quite voluminous. By default, max limit is undefined, so all records will be downloaded unless you specify a value. We will keep the default setting as undefined. You can set a DS recall time value to set a wait time limit for recalling a migrated data set directly referenced by the plugin. For example, the file transmission step. The default wait time is 30 seconds, but you can set a value from 5 to 600 seconds. If the recall of the migrated data set exceeds the specified wait time, a timeout error is reported. DS recall time is used for all steps that access data sets in DevOps for DB2 and SQL Assurance for DB2. We will keep the default setting for DS recall time. GUD plan is the plan used for BMC Amy Command Center for DB2. This plan is required to evaluate two types of violations, SQL violations from the SQL Assurance process and schema violations from the schema standards process in BMC Amy DevOps. The violations are displayed in the command center tool. The default plan name is BMC GUIPL, but a custom plan name could have been specified during installation of command center. Next is the SSL certificate validation section. By default, our plugin modules perform certificate validation when communicating with the mainframe server. To disable this validation, set the TS flag value to false. We will keep the default value of true since we want to perform SSL certificate validation. Now we will enter the account number that will be included in my JCL's job card. During this course I will refer to JCL, but we will not be looking at any JCL until we start configuring plugin modules in a future course. Here in the lab, I need to route our JCL to run on a specific LPAR. You can define your own variables in the properties file and use them in the JCL built by the plugin module. We will cover this in more detail in a future course. Now we will enter the DSN exit and DSN load that will be used for the DB2 connection. We will specify details on how Change Manager is installed. First, let's navigate to the Change Manager main menu. On the command line, enter TSOIS or DDN to display all currently allocated data sets. Page down through the list looking for DDs that start with ISP followed by five digits. These data sets will be allocated when Change Manager is invoked. First find the Runtime High-Level Qualifier. The UserLib High-Level Qualifier. The UserLib Override Load Library. And finally, Product Load Library. Returning to the BMC Amy DevOps comment section, enter the RTE HLQ and UserLib HLQ. For ProcLib, enter RTE HLQ.BMCCNTL. For JobLib values, enter UserLinkLib and the product LinkLib. If you do not need these, because they are in the link list, you can remove them from the JCL built by the plugin module. We will describe this in a future course. Now we need to find the default options module being used by the product and the product options file known as the POF file. Returning to the change manager main menu on the command line, enter ENVI on the command line and press enter. On the command line on the BMC environment panel, enter DOPS to display the DOPS listing. The DOPS listing is displayed. Find the DOPS module name and the POF file name and enter them in the properties file. Now you specify the data sets that will be used to hold the artifacts of the DevOps run. These data sets are where you will transmit DDL, save CDL, the worklist, the JCL to run the worklist, and the impact report. All these data sets are fixed block 80 PDS data sets. Enter in the names of these five data sets. You have the option of building rollback JCL, which you can use to back out the changes that are being moved forward. Here are the four data sets needed to support rollback. Add these data set names to the properties file. Now we will specify details about SQL Explorer, which supports SQL Assurance. To specify your PSS plan name, view your SQL Explorer installation user library data set, UBMCSAMP. 
The PSS plan name is in the member that begins with PSS2 and your DB2 SSID name. Returning to the properties file, enter the PSS plan name. To determine your rules data set name and rules member, view the runtime high level qualifiers BMC SAMP data set for your SQL Explorer installation and verify that the default COBDFLT rules member is in that data set. If you have to find a custom rules member, then verify that it is in the same data set. In the properties file, enter the rule DSN name and the default rules member. Finally, you can enter the SQL Explorer currency variable. This variable is used with explain to specify the three-character currency code for the monetary unit used to calculate the cost translation rate. The default variable value is US dollars. Once you have entered plugin property values, save the properties file. This file is now ready to use in the applications for BMC Amy DevOps and SQL Assurance. Thank you for your time. For more information about any BMC mainframe product, check the video description for links to the documentation and other related videos.